Hi and welcome to a short demo of my uh, synthesizer as it is at the moment. It's still a lot of work to go but um, it's sort of doing some things. So um, what I've got here is I'm projecting my, t my, my laptop um, screen onto the TV so I can just have a camera statically fixed looking into it without it needing to look over my shoulder at the laptop. Um, then I'm sat behind with the laptop, I'm sat behind the camera, so if you can't hear my audio, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, um, so off we go. Um, what I'll do is, this program on the right hand side is controller, and it's a program that allows you to lay down a whole bunch of various controllers. You can see rotary dials and sliders and things, and each of those can be assigned to a MIDI CC channel, a, con a continuous controller, um, to uh, transmit values from this PC program down the USB MIDI to the TZ4 which is at the heart of this synthesizer. So if I just connect up to the synthesizer, that is the prosaically named Fat Bastard, so that's me. Um, and then I'll just try, yep, we're in business. So this is the output of the TZ and it's just showing me that I am receiving the messages and it's doing something. Let's turn that oscillator into a sine wave um, I'll leave it on the bass octave and just make sure that volume is yeah, just put it to a bit there so, um, and see what happens aha uh -huh. a sine wave is a bit hissy sounding it's, it's not the noise, I'll just put in some noise the noise is obvious so I'll just uh, take that noise off and yet still there is a slight hiss to the background of this and I'm not entirely sure where it's coming from just at the moment. Um, okay, so that's one oscillator, we're just playing sign, so if I just ditch the terminal for now. So this is just cakewalk in the background and it's got a couple of VSTs loaded, so there's a spectrum analyzer here which will show the actual notes and an oscilloscope which can show the signal shape um, back to the controller. So if I just play that sign again. Now, interesting bug here. I'm sending C4 and it's playing C5. And like if I drop C3, it's playing C4. And if I go up to C5, it plays, oh, it's gone off the top, but it's C6. So there's an off by one octave thing going on here that I need to sort out. So at the moment, I'm just playing sine. Let's go for sawtooth. A reverse sawtooth. Square wave. The other two I won't even bother with because um, they need setting up in a, a more complex way. I can go up an octave if I just play the same note, or two octaves, it's going to get very high pitched. Yes, or down two. But I'm going to leave that on the bass octave so it just plays. Oops, if I don't actually hit the right note. Um, so now I'll turn on this second uh, oscillator. If I just put that on a sawtooth, say, um, at the moment it's set up exactly the same octave, same semitone range, same detuning. Um, I need to turn its volume up a bit so we can hear it. And then just play that. And that's playing a sawtooth and triangle over each other. In fact, if I just put them both on sawtooth, say, um, yeah, that's two side by side. Sawtooth. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just uh, increase the semitones of this one. I'll take it up seven semitones, uh, which should sound nice. So, to let me see that happening, I'll just do this until it says semi is equal seven. So that's now semi seven semitones up from the. So this one's playing seven semitones higher than this one. Um, now for play. Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. Uh, if I want to add a bit of an edge to that, I'll just detune it just by a fraction, and we get, which is interesting. Um, now, for the rest of this, to the same amount that keep playing notes, I'll just get some notes playing in the background. So I've got an arpeggiator here. I'm going to put it on. Uh, let's play an up pattern first. And I'll just play three notes here. That, that note. That note.
so you can actually hear me talk. So next up, so that's two oscillators, one playing slightly off the other. I mean, actually, this one's down two octaves at the moment. Um, they're about the same. Uh, I'll put in a little bit of noise just to give it a bit of character as well. Um, so what I'll actually do next is I'll just switch back. I'll switch back to a single oscillator. Let's just play a note here. Yeah. But now I'm going to oh, yeah I'm going to modulate it with a, a low frequency oscillator. So I'll just give it a sine wave say, and I'll just give it a, a low frequency and a small amount of impact. And now what happens? Use the arpeggiator. Once I start using the arpeggiator, I can't talk because it's too noisy. Um, so I'll just start playing around with the LFO to see what happens. So I'll just switch that to go up and down, play some low notes, that, maybe that. That, that. So next up, uh, I'll just see what we're playing. Mm, it's a bit sort of noisy. Let's just take the edge off that. Oh, I'll just take the LFOs off as well. So let me just take those off. Um, hmm, some sort of noise there. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's go with that. And then I'll just put the filter on low. I need the arpeggiator again, so I'm just going to play with the frequency and the resonance of the filter. Um, you'll be able to see that in the spectrum analyzer down here, actually, as I move the frequency range. Uh, let's just play some notes and stick this on again. And
that's when it stops, isn't it? Um, yeah, so the things I've still got to do, um, I'm adding wavetables to it, so it's going to be able to play general MIDI um, instrument lists like piano and flute and violin and things. Um, but And that can all go through the, the filter and, and can be arpeggiated and so on, and, and through the envelopes. Um, what will turn off is the LFOs and the oscillators, and, and well, could mix some noise in with it, but it doesn't probably make much sense. I didn't look at the chorus, but uh, anyway, I think that probably gives a flavour for where I'm at and why has the mouse stopped moving on that screen over there?